April 7th, 2014, Blackmagic Design released the first Blackmagic Ursa. It was a much anticipated new high-end digital film camera designed to revolutionize workflow on set. Many speculated whether it could compete with Airy, Red, and other cameras for use in films given its low cost. However, after just a couple of years, plans for this camera were short-circuited by production problems, sensor issues, and even the sun appearing black in some footage in what felt like a bad omen from the beginning. But why did this concept seemingly fail? And should there be a cause for concern for future products in this line? Find out today on our Abandoned Camera Series. Blackmagic Design was founded by Graham Petty back in 2001, and while we won't get into the entire history of the company in this video, we'll add a bit of context as to what got them to this point in 2014. Since the beginning of the company where they made adapters and broadcast equipment, they had the goal of making expensive gear affordable to the everyday user. Usually reserved for high-end film and TV production budgets, Blackmagic set their sights on creating cinema cameras with the same goal in mind. Resulting in the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 2.5K in 2012, the Pocket Cinema Camera in 2013, and Production Camera camera also in 2014, but they had their sights set on Hollywood and high-end production cameras, and at NAB in 2014, they released the first Blackmagic Ursa camera. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me. I'm Steve from B&H Photo, and we're here at NAB 2014. I'm talking with Bob from Blackmagic Design, and he's going to go over the brand new Blackmagic Ursa camera. The Ursa had everything, including a massive 10-inch fold-out on-set monitor, a user-upgradable Super 35 global shutter 4K image sensor, a 12 gig SDI and internal dual RAW and ProRes recorders, a sensor and lens mount assembly that could be changed, which meant you could swap out your sensor for the latest technology in the future and keep your investment in the camera body. It even had a built-in liquid cooling system that kept internal components cool. Included in these announcements was the curious photo of a DSLR camera mounted to the front of an Ursa. This was the Ursa HDMI model, which allowed you to record ProRes files from your DSLR camera, which was meant to be a go-between for those who already had existing camera equipment but needed a more robust codec and professional monitoring capabilities and features that the Ursa body offered. Yeah, this camera never saw the light of day, and you can barely find any information about it anywhere beyond this picture and archived web pages. Speculation seems to be that it was never released because of patent and technical issues and is believed to eventually be converted into the Blackmagic Design Video Assist, which offers similar recording solutions without an entire body with it. This was the first announced Ursa camera to be abandoned by Blackmagic, and never actually shipped out and kind of just disappeared. And no one ever really seemed to get their hands on one. And while abandoning the specific camera model might not seem like that big of a deal, there were other issues with the primary Ursa camera. While early press reports were positive about the new upcoming camera, issues reported from users on the Blackmagic forum started gaining some traction in the press. No Film School asked Grant Petty about those issues in an audio interview. Some people have been having some issues with the 4K camera. I feel like they're seeing a lot of noise and some other issues. People aren't having issues with the 4K camera. The 4K camera is really good, but they had great reports on it. And you come up and people discuss stuff, and the only people that seem to say that we've had any issues or whatever is the press. And it's just bizarre because they're trying to, you know, what are they trying to do? Get a like a cool headline? They're not interested in what a whole bunch of, you know, loudmouths online think and that's somehow supposed to be real. That's not real. The issues most notable from this interview from many of the forums and from those I've spoken with that use these cameras was the black sun and the FPN or fixed pattern noise. From this issue, some thought Grant Petty didn't think that FPN on the 4K was real and that it was only affecting a certain amount of users. Some were even offended that he would insinuate that them voicing their concerns over this issue was just them being internet trolls and some responding that this interview was painful to listen to because he's saying that the FPN on my camera is a fiction of my imagination and that I'm essentially a liar. And while some were upset, others countered this questioning if they were actually using the cameras properly and also mentioned the fact that Blackmagic had been allowing owners to send back the cameras to get recalibrated to fix the issues. Regardless of who was to blame or who was wrong or what exactly was happening here, it was a sore subject for some who bought into these new cameras. Also a sore subject was the black sun issue, where the sensor would return footage of the sun as black. This was not a new problem as this was an issue in some of the earlier iterations. In April 2014, Christian Lamb of Blackmagic Design gave an update on how they were trying to fix this issue, saying, Some sensors have additional circuitry to try and overcome this, and this was available in the pocket cinema camera. Unfortunately, it is not in a 2.5K sensor. DaVinci Resolve had a black sun dot fix, but Blackmagic really just simply gave a post-production fix for this issue. 
Users still had issues with this in the Ursa until it seemed to sort of kind of be fixed in the Ursa version 2. Even with the Ursa version 2 trying to fix a lot of these issues, Blackmagic in 2015 seemingly moved on from this, recreating the model entirely with the Ursa Mini 4K and the Ursa Mini 4.6K. The Ursa Mini 4K and 4.6K were instant hits with an all new design and featuring a global shutter, with many saying the camera stole NAB in 2015. But this phrase quickly turned to disappointment as the camera was delayed for shipping until 2016 because of the inability to figure out how to make the global shutter work with the amount of dynamic range they wanted in the camera, and finally Blackmagic decided to remove the promised global shutter from the cameras. With Grant Petty saying, we're deeply sorry that it has taken much longer than expected to ship the Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4.6K and the Blackmagic Micro Cinema Camera and extremely disappointed that we were unable to deliver a feature that we had previously announced. The cameras were then shipped and then began the era of the Ursa Mini with further iterations coming in 2017 with the Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K that featured an updated body. There was also an upgrade price for the Ursa Mini Pro in 2017 where you could get the Pro for 3K if you provide a proof of purchase for the Ursa. This was due to the failure of them being able to crack the sensor upgrade they had promised for the Ursa. And then in 2019, the Ursa Mini Pro G2 with an updated sensor. And then in 2020, Ursa Mini 12K. And the latest iteration in 2021, the Ursa G2 Broadcast. Through these iterations, you would see Blackmagic abandon support for these cameras with the original Ursa Mini cameras being stuck with CD&G RAW codecs when Blackmagic RAW was released in 2018. And this has been hypothesized as being due to potential software and hardware compatibility issues. But even so, this interesting trend of abandoning software continued to the Ursa Mini Pro G2, which is considered by many to be one of the best cameras Blackmagic currently offers. And it should be, considering it's still tied as the most expensive camera that they sell. But with the release of Gen 5 Color Science in 2021, while even the older Pocket 4K that was released a year prior to the G2 received this update, the Ursa G2 has yet to receive an update. In fact, on Blackmagic's website, the last noted update that released for the Ursa G2 was on August 28, 2019. Even the original Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K received an update on June 5, 2020. But the G2, according to what we could find, has not received an update since the year it was released. And while some speculate that this is because Black Magic really got it right with the camera and they didn't want to mess anything up with it. Some updates that the other cameras received with updated peaking information and other display updates and even just the ability to shoot in the same color signs as the rest of Blackmagic's camera offering has not happened. And this is odd considering they're still selling this camera as new and at a flagship price for their company. There have been a total of six Ursa Mini cameras released since the last version of the Blackmagic Ursa came out over eight years ago. Through the history of this camera, there have been several abandonments of promised features, cameras that never came to be, abandoned software updates to relatively new cameras. And that's currently where we are, with no news about a new Ursa eight years after they released, and a camera line that's seemingly abandoned by Blackmagic as they pursued and updated into other iterations. There is a question of whether or not we will see another iteration of the original Ursa camera and whether or not any future Ursa Mini or Ursa cameras can be purchased without the fear that they might be abandoned by Blackmagic a year or two after release.